Hello and welcome to another TRM tutorial. Today we're going to go through how to add workflow to Maximo Anywhere and to do this we're going to be using TRM's product Anywhere Builder. Uh, right now what you're looking at is the Anywhere Builder product. Uh, we have selected uh, the work approval application. Uh, for this demonstration I'm going to be using a very simple app, the work approval out of the box. Exactly what work approval looks like out of the box. Out of the box this is pretty much all you get. Um, you get a button and it allows you to approve and to cancel off the list page and then detail screen. So we're going to change this up a little bit. Uh, to start let's first go ahead and make sure we have workflow set up correctly. So I'm going to go into the uh, workflow administration and see that I have a record in workflow. And I'm also going to show you the uh, workflow designer and show you which process I am I have set up for work orders. It is the out of the box work order status or woe status which just goes through and approves uh, or completes, etc., routes it through workflow a work order. And it's a pretty silly, uh, simple work order or workflow. So my first record uh, you'll notice is up here. It's in workflow, and my second record that I have assigned to this user is uh, not in workflow. Um, and you can see we have the supervisor as Wilson, so that they show up in my work approval application when I log in as Wilson back to my Anywhere Builder product, I'm going to go ahead and open up the work approval main screen. You'll see that we have a bunch of buttons for a common activity. We're going to go to the start page, which is the list page we saw. We notice we have two buttons, the approve and the cancel button. So first, let's just get rid of these. I don't even want these on my main screen right now. Uh, for this, we're going to simplify the screen a little bit back at my screen I'm just going to actually insert a new button into uh, the previous approved button location and we're just going to give it a label and call it route. That's pretty much all we need to do for this. We just need a button. This has a label on it. Now I could actually assign uh, an image but in this case I'm not going to. A uh, pretty image that would show up for the user. Um, now I'm going to create an event. Uh, so we're going to create an on-click event for the route button. That was a right click and then select create event. And I'll name this event uh, click route. Uh, now I'm going to create the JavaScript for that will fire when this button is clicked. So we hit control space we're given context uh, to our event. I'm going to select the resource that's passed to us and from here when I hit dot it gives me a list of methods and fields uh, and there's a workflow route workflow method on the resource and so I can basically say resource dot route workflow pass it the name of the workflow process I want we'll call it this is uh, called woe status. Now where did I get that from? Uh, if you go back and you look at workflow designer, you'll notice that it's right there. It's the name of the process, woe status. So after that, we can pass it optionally to functions, one that occurs after the workflow is routed, and one that occurs if that gets called if there's an error trying to route this. So, first fu function, we're just going to say when this is routed, we'll go ahead and use the user object, which gives me access to common functionality uh, for the overall use of this application. Um, we're going to say user.show. Now, this will allow me to transition to a specific view. There are lots of other options I can pass to this method, but for this case, we just really need to pass it the ID of the view we want to transition to. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and double click on the transition to uh, off the list page. This will open up the view it generally it normally transitions to. 
and go to supplemental data and I can select the ID and just copy it. We'll go back over and we're going to paste this into the show. So this is the ID of the view that I want to transition to when if this route was successful. Now if it were a failure, I'll, I'll need to let the user know that they failed to route the workflow. So I'll warn and I can pass it any message I want. For this case we'll just do some simple message here. And you also get passed an error message whenever you get that uh, method gets called if you want to use that in your message. Now I'm also going to go ahead and make sure that we show a busy signal sign. So when the user clicks it, we go ahead and show the application as busy and thinking. And then whenever uh, the route was successful, we'll hide the busy. Uh, or if there's an error, we want to also hide the busy. Great. So that's we're done with our, our routing. That's all you have to do to route this record in workflow. There's some more details now that we'll have to work on to make this a more usable button. So let's go ahead and just test this to make sure that we're seeing our route. We hit the quick preview button and this will build our application and launch the browser for me so I can preview my application as it would look on the device. Uh, it opens up another browser. I already have one open, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and close this. It's our Maximo window, so we'll just hit the go refresh this. This built the application again. We'll log in as Wilson. And you notice we now have a route button. However, you'll also notice that we have a route button for both records, and in Workflow Designer, go to the administrate uh, workflow administration you'll notice that we have only one of those records in, uh, we have one of those records already in workflow so the second step to this is hiding the route button oh let me first show you uh, that when I press the button it actually does route the workflow so it routes the workflow we actually see it in the admin uh, table uh, and so we got the the records 1018 etc so I'm going to take one of these back out of the workflow and go back into my app. Um, but now I need to hide those buttons conditionally, uh, based uh, the route button conditionally for each row based on whether or not it's already in workflow. We don't want them to route a workflow that's already in workflow. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and create a render event for that button so that when the button is rendered, I can tell it to whether or not to display. We'll name this on render, our render route button. Uh, first, before we go ahead and enter the JavaScript for that, I need to do one more thing. I need to import data from Maximo. Doing that, I'll use the wizard uh, import Maximo object. And I'm going to go ahead and select the uh, WF instance MBO. This will allow me to get workflow instances and bring them down as part of my data with this application. Call it WF instance resource. I'll make it a work management domain name. And we'll also make uh, WoTrack the authorized application because this is a WoTrack specific or work order specific. And we also don't, we're not making new records of that type, so we uncheck that box. The wizard will then open up the resource for me, and you'll notice that it's done all the necessary creation of the OSLC resource, um, anything else, object structure in the database. Uh, on the Maximo side. Now I'm also going to add uh, fields in here. So I'm going to go over and create or import more fields from Maximo because the only field that is imported is the identifier. So we're going to go ahead and click on the import fields, select the object which is WF instance and we're going to select a bunch of fields here that we will eventually use, uh, not necessarily in this demonstration. So we'll start with the most importantly the owner ID and owner table. Now you notice those over in our data explorer on the left, 
and I'm going to open up the active, uh, which is a yarn, and I'm going to copy the described by. This I'm going to use in my where clause uh, when this is equal to one or true. I want to make sure I'm only fetching the active workflow instances. And I'm also going to only be selecting uh, the workflow instances for work order. So this is my base where clause. This will fetch me all the work or active work order workflow instances for work orders uh, for when I'm dealing with this. Now, going back to that render event, I'm going to edit the one I created. It's just empty, but I can edit it. And using completion again, we're going to gain access to that uh, workflow instance by using the user object. Or, I'm sorry, let me first go ahead and say hide this by default. Uh, hiding this control by default uh, until we know exactly how many records or whether or not there are any records in memory or on the server. Then we're going to go get the resource by using the user uh, object. It gives me a list of all the resources I have configured. Then we're going to use the find on server method. And this takes uh, a filter and two functions. Uh, the field values filter uh, will filter the records down on the server saying uh, make sure we have uh, updated our records based on this uh, this filter and then the functions basically get returned uh, if they were found or if they were not found. So on on match we'll get the first method and on fail we'll get the second one. Fail is not a bad thing it just means that we don't have any records in workflow uh, for that record. So my field values, how do I figure this one out? Well first we need to know um, what the name of the value in the workflow instance resource. So work our uh, owner ID is the name of the field as we just saw there in the data explorer. We'll expand work order and it's the identifier so the the work order ID. So the owner ID is the work order ID so we'll use completion to get the resource dot identifier. So we're just making a map of the field so owner ID uh, equals the resource that identifier. Pass that to the method and then if the records are found it calls my function and passes me an array of records and in this case I'm just going to regardless of whether or not uh, how many records I have all I care is that I have records I'm going to just hide it because I don't want to show this button uh, if there is a record uh, in, in on the server matching this work order ID and we'll show it in the case where there were none found. Put a little comments for the next person that comes around and needs to modify this. Now done with that I need to actually go in and refactor. Uh, use the refactor method to add a required resource to this view. Uh, so this is the uh, resource that I included, the WF instance resource. We just may make sure that we initialize that resource whenever this view is entered. Uh, go ahead and save build. And now we can go from building over to testing to make sure that we can route the workflow appropriately, but we are not seeing the button when the record has already been routed. Log in. You notice now I have one record without the button and one record with the button as, uh, as appropriate with my workflow administration. I route this record. I get to my approval, I can approve it now, etc. And I go back and now that record's already work routed so I don't see the button anymore. If I go ahead and refresh this, you'll notice I have two records now. That's the end of our demonstration.